everyone. Welcome to the Hormone Lifestyle Zone. I'm your host, Meg Ricci. This podcast series is about demystifying women's hormonal issues and struggles and the many things that dance in between. And a big issue that dances in between is so many of us at different times in our lives feel stuck. It's an awful sensation. It's like, oh my God, I, I, I can't move forward. We may feel stuck in our jobs, our relationships. Maybe we're having a difficult time working on a project and we're doing everything and procrastinating and not getting it done because we just feel stuck. We may feel stuck in, in how we're eating and our health. So today I'm going to explore with you, with my next guest, being stuck. How do you get unstuck? And my guest is um, Avis Cardella, and Avis is a journalist and a writer. And we spoke, uh, she lives outside of Paris in the countryside, actually two hours outside in the region of Normandy. And um, we had a nice Zoom call and said, hey, how are you? And she said, I'm stuck right now. She's working on a book and... Um, needs to make some revisions and edits. And she's like, I can't get into it. It's been four months. And I said, Avis, what would it be like if you just sat down and to write something on being stuck? And maybe this will open doors for you. And uh, that's what she did. And, you know, we continued our conversation. I said, I said, Avis, why don't you come on the hormone lifestyle zone? Let's talk about being stuck. And, um, what I left out is that we spoke again uh, last week and she said, guess what? I'm not stuck anymore. She said, I'm writing. This is great. Uh, this is a Im very important thing for Avis because she's a journalist. She's an author. She specializes in the fields of photography and art and lifestyle and fashion. She's appeared in international publications, uh, in American Photo, the New York Times, British Vogue. She has a book, her memoir, um, and the title of that is Spent memoirs of shopping addict and this was published in 2010 and it received quite a bit of acclaim for its depiction of retail therapy that accompanied the fast-paced life of new york city lifestyle in the 90s and 2000s she was addicted to shopping i knew her back then i didn't know this was even an issue so today just to let, as i said she's living um, in France with her husband, and she tries to embra embrace a slow living lifestyle. So, um, as I said, we spoke again, and she said, I'm having this breakthrough, and here we are today, and we're going to talk about being stuck and how to get unstuck. And because I feel that looking at people being stuck, and this happens a lot when I have clients come in to see me, um, it's an opportunity to shift and to change and to grow. And it can be really, really scary um, because you're, you know, you're venturing into an area of the unknown and you do not know what possibilities are ahead of you if you start making these changes. So we're going to talk about that because being stuck forces us to, or has the opportunity for us to look at what is and isn't working in our lives. And another way of looking at it in Buddhism, they say, congratulations, you've hit a wall. It's, it forces us to stop, to say, what is important to me? What is it that I need to shift? How do I need, do I need certain support from others to help me make this shift? Or do I just lean into it and start making changes? And we'll go into more details during this podcast. But Avis, I am so delighted to have you here, my friend, and welcome to the Hormone Lifestyle Zone. Good to see you. Hi, Meg. Um, it's so funny to hear you talk about my our conversation and that little breakthrough because it was kind of strange that um, it, it was lingering for about four months, this stuckness, and the conversation was kind of like a it precipitated a change in me, and it was interesting for me to to then think about the prospect of writing about that period of being stuck, but also talking about it, because it seems that our conversation, just talking about it, made some things come together, uh, things that I had been probably in my mind thinking about for a while. Um, but the stuck thing, uh, if I want to, if I can explain a bit oh, about yeah, what please. happened. Yeah. 
um, I had written a novel. I'd worked about two years on that novel. I had to get a new agent because unfortunately I, I lost my prior agent. He, he passed away a few years ago. And, um, and I went through this whole process and it was really in the end, very successful. I, I finished the book. I, I got a new agent. We sent out my book and, and in the end we didn't get a buyer. We didn't get a publisher. And at the end of that, I realized that the next step would be that I had to go back to my work and re-edit and when I was thinking about doing that, um, that's when I came up against the proverbial congratulations, you hit a wall. <laughs> and um, although I didn't look at it as congratulatory, I looked at it as, oh, my God, what's happening? I'm stuck. And, um, and it was a feeling of really not, being able, not knowing how to tackle the task, not knowing what to do next, feeling a bit paralyzed. And uh, this feeling of stuckness, I can't say I never had it before in my life, but it was, it was a bit alarming for me to come up against this. And so I started thinking about it. Uh, and at one point, I realized I had to analyze what was going on with me and start looking at it from a perspective of um, not a panic, but an acceptance and kind of saying, okay, you're stuck, now what do you do? And learning how to just sit with this stuckness and understand what was going on with me. So what were you feeling? Like, what did it feel like? You know, when people say they're stuck, it can feel like anxiety. It can feel like um, unable, to, you know, where they're just not having, um, oh, what's the word, motivation. Yes. There's a lot of procrastination. So viscerally, how did it feel in your body first to feel stuck? It felt like what you said. It felt like a lack, a, a total lack of motivation. Um, not motivation in my life, but motivation on the creative front, motivation yeah. to tackle this project. Um, total lack of, of desire to sit in front of the computer and get that book back up on the, the screen and to deal with what needed to be done. A lack of joy also, because I yeah. felt like I had lost some of this joy for what I was doing. It felt like this enormous task in front of me that I did not want to do because it didn't feel, I didn't feel the fun in it anymore. And I love to write. That's why I write, yeah. but I didn't feel the fun in it anymore. And I, I was really, um, just, I just did not want to have this writing in my life. I just wanted to push it off to the side and pretend it didn't exist anymore mm -hmm. and didn't want to look at the book, didn't want to think about the book. And um, on some level, it was it was just a sense of disappointment also because I, I had been disappointed that we didn't get it published. But I didn't feel like I had the, and this was the interesting part, I, I felt almost like I didn't have the, the capacity to do it. Like it was, it didn't feel safe. It didn't feel, mm. it didn't feel like I was capable of even putting a sentence together. It was a very strange experience for me in this sense that, that I felt. You lost your confidence. A total loss of confidence, wow. you motivation. Really, you were really questioning your, your creative yeah. uh, capability. Yeah, and, the, yeah, that where where was this creativity coming from? And you know, almost there's a part of me that almost said, um, "You didn't really write this book." You know, <laughs> it's like it was like a, a kind of a mind game. But it was um, the the rejection seemed to land me in a, in in a place where I felt afraid then of further rejection. And like you just said, I lost yeah. the confidence. And and I think in a lot of people's lives, when they uh, get stuck, whether it's in relationship things, I don't know, after a divorce, uh, when things go wrong, you do lose that confidence, don't you? And, and that's often a, mo a, a, a real component of being stuck. So, I, you know, it's, I, I think that's very interesting because, and I, I think we've all I think everyone to some degree has felt stuck. I go through periods of feeling stuck and then I have to take a moment and say, what is it that I'm feeling stuck about? And a lot of times I'm not feeling the joy, as you said, 
So question I want to get back to, what flipped for you that you could go back and write? And when you started writing again in the past few weeks, is it coming from a different place than you had in the past? Is there something new in, in, in your ability, your direction, your creative essence of writing? Are you well, different in some I'm, way? Well, yes, yes. Yes and no. Yes and no. <laughs> the yes were, part yeah. is that when I realized that I lost my confidence, um, I I said, okay, well, let me concentrate on something else. So, and and this mm. gets back to something um, maybe hormonal, maybe you can speak further to this, yeah. but I just decided I would take care of myself physically while I was going through this. And I think this was a very important thing for me to do because it helped me rebuild my confidence. Uh, I think I explained to you that I discovered uh, during this whole thing that I had SIBO mm -hmm. and I was treated for that and that went away. And I think that made a really big difference in me so, overall. And, and SIBO, which I treat a lot of in my practice, is small yeah. intestinal overgrowth. Bacterial, and, overgrowth. Uh, bacterial yeah. overgrowth, and it can cause a lot of symptoms of gas and bloat. You don't feel well, and and it can. What can I ask? What symptoms were you having prior? I, I was just having digestive problems, okay. uh, bloating, yeah. belching, and just yeah. you know not feeling like I was digesting my food correctly, feeling low energy, all of these things that go along with SIBO. And did and you it. feel energetically off? Yes. And yes. this coincided during the time that you were unable to write? Yeah. And here's the question, chicken and egg. Was it the disappointment and the lack of confidence and the, the anxiety about writing that caused the SIBO? Or was the SIBO there before? Or well, it's kind I, of a... I mean, I always question. look at all of this. You know, sometimes when we're um, without overanalyzing it, you know, I look at any time you take a pause, you hit the pause button and you take care of yourself. Self-care to me is a priority. When you're taking care of yourself, you're kind of stepping in in that nurturing mode to say, what, what do I need right yes. now to heal, right? And I know you, you know, yeah. you probably did everything that you were supposed to do. And did you start feeling an after- and then, you know, it, it could have just coincided. I mean, energetically, when our bodies are off, it's going to affect our creativity. It's going to affect our energy. So who knows? I think it helped me. What happened is I treated the SIBO and then I started um, exercising again. I started doing my yoga again. I started doing my Pilates again. I yeah. start, and that became like a snowball effect in a good way, a good snowball yeah. that took me to the confidence level and to the thinking about it more clearly and, and feeling like, okay, um, you know, you're getting your confidence back. You're feeling better. You're feeling more motivated. And, and so, so I think the physical aspect definitely had something to do with it, but the two go, go together that, that I was, had been thinking about it, mulling over it, sitting by the river, watching the river go by thinking, okay, it's okay to be stuck. And then feeling feeling like, yes, it's okay for me to think about what this means. I don't have to panic about it. And then doing the right thing by taking the, the time, like you said, to take care of myself physically so that I could then get back to, you know, working again, being creative again, being on stuff. I think when we start addressing our health, is an opportunity um, when we start feeling better, we feel more grounded. Absolutely. We feel more present. And yes. I feel that, you know, when you're looking at the digestion, you know, it's um, a separation of the pure from the impure. What are you digesting? What are you assimilating in your body? Mm -hmm. Also, maybe it's a new way of assimilation of ideas and how you move forward. I always look at that anytime, you know, I went through just a surgery in the past two months for my arm. I'm still recovering from that. And it's forced me to slow down. There are just certain things I can't do. So I'm becoming more mindful of how I'm caring for myself. Um, but, I, you know, a lot of people, Avis, they'll be like, yeah, I got gas and bloat. And they'll let it go on and on and on for the longest time. And... And then they address it. But you, you, you know, you took that moment to take care of it. So... I, you know, as I said, you know, being stuck 
it to me is an opportunity to shift the way we're being in the world. It may bring in for all of us a different creative way of looking at life, of of um, looking at how we write. So you got back into writing. Did something did something shift in your writing? Did you take a new avenue in how you're addressing your book? Are you doing things differently in the book? If you want to yes. talk about the book a little, you can. I don't know <laughs> if you want to talk about the subject. Yes, I um, I um, did realize that I was, it gets back to the joy question. Were you enjoying your writing? Did, did I, did I still feel like I was getting pleasure from my writing? And I felt at some point that the whole process of trying to sell the book, to listen to the reactions to it, to listen to the suggestions, because there are a lot of suggestions of changing it. Those are all things that are very important. And there's, there's critique that you take on that you, you appreciate and, and you have to know, I think it's very difficult. You have to know how much of that to absorb and how much of that you have to push back also as a creative person. Um, So you can't just change everything for everybody. You have to stick to a certain degree to your own feelings about things. And that was a big one for me because I realized at some point I was taking on too much of what people were saying to me and getting a bit overwhelmed by it. Some people would say change the book in this way, change the book in that way. And, and that I think for people, you get a lot of advice from people when you're stuck, but I think sometimes you have to li- take a step back and listen to yourself. So a big thing for me was listening to myself and what I needed to understand about that book that I'm writing and what it was about and to stick to that, stick to my original vision of it, because uh, in the process, you realize you might stray from the vision of what you're doing mm-hmm. because other people are offering so many different suggestions. Um, not to say you don't take on some things that mm-hmm. could be um, very, very helpful, but I think it's hard to, to, to understand. And it gets back to the confidence question to understand and, and still maintain that confidence in what you're doing and what you feel about a project at the same time, taking on these, these suggestions and incorporating them into your process. And it can be a bit overwhelming. And I think I was a bit, like I said, a bit overwhelmed by, by all of it. And that was my crisis there and being stuck. I think sometimes what confidence is, is believing in yourself. And others can say things to you and it doesn't sway you from believing in you. And uh, if I can share, because I, I find this so interesting, is that over the past few years, I thought, you know what? I need to do social media in a certain way. I need to market myself and do these programs and do this and that. And I hired people and I was, excuse me, being consulted what I needed to do and not do. And it didn't sit right. And a few weeks ago or in the past, actually few months, I've been really like reevaluating and reassessing what, what am I doing in my life? What brings me joy in the work that I do with women? And what I see coming up, I had done a program with women um, over the summer, early fall. And I found that many of these women, you know, you're, you're changing your diet, your, your, you know, self-care habits, all these things are a really tremendous challenge and people can feel stuck. And how do you get people out of that to say, you can do this you can make lifestyle changes. I'm simplifying it in your life. But I realized something important. A lot of people are feeling stuck. And I had stopped doing acupuncture a couple of years ago when I moved to Atlanta. I'd been doing it for 26 or so years. I, I, like, I needed a break. I've been just doing a lot of nutritional work with people and, and lifestyle and coaching. And I just thought, I need to get back to acupuncture because mm-hmm. that allows me to be one-on-one in a room with people to assist them and hold the space with acupuncture to help that stuckness that because acupuncture is about energetically creating a place of homeostasis. It's in, in Chinese medicine, we talk about stagnation, the movement of the liver stagnation. How do we help people get unstuck and the beauty of energy work and particularly acupuncture I've studied all over and, and I've learned from some of the most incredible masters 
is just by holding that space and becoming the intention for that person to shift, it's yes. profound. And I started doing acupuncture again, and I'm coming from a very different place of just allowing people to feel and hear that inner voice with more clarity of how they can start moving forward and not questioning. It's not, and, and it takes time. Maybe it starts to, um, for many people, it, it, it starts to stir things up so they can hear that inner voice. And I think, again, confidence is believing in yourself and it's self-love. And, and and I mean that's my idea of of a whole uh, of a holistic type of competence. I believe in me, and I believe in the things that I want to do. And did you? Um, oh God! There's a movie that came out on Netflix with Ann Bennett and Jodie Foster, and it's about the woman. She is, and I forgot her name. Diane Naya. Diane Naya. Did you see that? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Not what yet. I love about her story is that in her 20s, she tried to swim from Cuba to Florida, to the Key West, yes. and wasn't able to do it. She decided years later at 60, 61, she was going to do it again. She swam it four more times until she got to Key West. And she never gave up. And people said, you can't do this. You've, and she said, I'm going to do it. I am, I believe in myself. I'm going, I, I'm driven. I have that drive. And I was so inspired by that movie. And a lot of times people are told, you can't do that. You have to do it this way. And we have to find that voice within ourselves. I mean, hers was whew, very, and I've worked with athletes and they're, they're just driven. They just see what they want and, and, and they go for it. I and, think that analogy is quite good. Um, mm -hmm. This good analogy to writing a book because <laughs> yeah. you do feel sometimes you've got this, this body of, for lack of, you know, just to go along with it, this sort of this body of water to get across or this, 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 this project that, you know, has this beginning and end and you have to kind of traverse the whole thing um, and not sink. <laughs> so, and I think, I think for me, the whole thing with the book was, was quite um, that, that stuckness was really a big, um, had to do a lot with my feelings about, about the writing itself and about my creativity and, mm -hmm. and, and, um, and the lack of confidence um, was something that there were moments when I actually did say to myself, maybe you should just chuck it all and just, you know, kind of give up here and not, not go on. That goes with being stuck. Also, there's those moments where you really feel so stuck that you don't, you give up. don't feel um, what's the point of getting unstuck for that particular thing. You have those moments where you actually say that to yourself. Why am I, I beating myself that. up with this? Why do I want to do this? Yeah. Um, but then you come out of it and a bit like, like the story you're talking about, you come out of it and whatever your drive is as an athlete or as a writer, as an artist, as a, as, as someone who wants to um, take a project forward as an acupuncturist and, and a healer that you are, um, you, you do at some point, sitting there thinking about it and confronting it, you do get to that point where you say, well, no, I can't stop doing this. I, there's no reason for me to stop doing this just, just because I'm thinking about it. And I think in our society, uh, there's, there's this such a negativity to, to being stuck. And that was something oh, I had. Yeah, to no, that's, I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to bring that up. People are like, oh my God, I'm stuck. I, I'm doing something wrong. No, you're not doing yes. anything wrong. It's like you're going along in life. Mm -hmm. Everything feels good. You're changing. Life is changing. I believe that life is a succession of experiences that allow us to expand and grow. And, you know, who we are at 10 years old, do you really want to be the same person at 30? That same view. I mean, there's that playful attitude when you're little and you're such a daredevil. But we grow, we expand, life changes. I mean, I look at who I was during the 90s. And as you said, 2000, you and I used to hang out and take walks in, in Central Park. Yes. And we would have these types of conversations. But I feel that 
each each year, each decade gives me an opportunity to expand and grow. And if I could just touch base on, so what has happened, this sense of feeling stuck, I felt like I was supposed to, I should be creating these programs and selling them online to help people with their health. And I just went, fuck that. I love my one-on-one -on -one sessions that I do on Zoom. I love doing nutritional work with women. I love helping women on, you know, peel back the onion to figure out what's going on in their lives, get to the root causes so they can move forward and create amazing things. I want to bring acupuncture back in because it makes me happy. And I, it's like, I, I, I felt like I was doing, and I'm glad I went down that road and realized it's not me. I, I, I just, it's not me. It's for other people. I just, I love the work that I do. And I think if anything, what I probably will start doing here is women's groups and talking about these issues. And, mm -hmm. and I used to do that in New York. And I was like, God, that's what I miss. That gives me purpose. When I get up in the morning, it allows me to feel like I'm singing and, or I have a, a song to sing. And, and, you know, as I mentioned to you, and I think I've said in another podcast, you know, I lost my brother quite abruptly and suddenly sorry, hit yeah. by a car Thank you. in August. And that was like, whoa, he was only two years younger than me. I was like, what am I doing in my life? If I were to die tomorrow, do I feel that I'm on my path? Do I feel like there's something else that I want to do? What is a value? What is important to me? What's important to me? I love holding the space for men and women to heal so that they, they can go forward in their lives and, and, and create a ripple effect in the world, impact or effect in the world that they get to shower the world with a little bit of who they are. I think uh, for me, um, and I, I perfectly can relate to what you're, you're saying, for me, it was um, this recent episode of being stuck. Mm -hmm. For me, it was rethinking the whole stuckness to to think of it as a period of trend um that that i'm i'm transitioning transitioning and yeah. and yeah that that it's more it's not it's not just you being stuck and it's not not something that is just negative the to get to the positive side of it and i think we 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 believe so much that being stuck is just totally 100% negative. But if we take more of an approach of understanding, like getting back, I love what you said about congratulations, you've hit a wall. Yeah. Um, to understand that that wall is there for a reason and to understand what the wall means and to understand that that um, contemplating that wall and contemplating that stuckness is is the way out of it. Not to, not to just give in to this idea that um, that being stuck is just you're bad for being stuck. You're not productive. You're not doing things the right way. You're not approaching life the right way. Um, I think that's something that we're we're all prone to to believe that this, the 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 idea of being um, inertia is bad. Movement is good, uh, and sometimes inertia is what you need. Sometimes yeah. lack of movement is what you need. Just well, it, yeah. Absolutely. And it is movement to go inward and ask what is meaningful yes, to me? Yeah. Why? And sometimes, you know, we're all looking for that quick fix. And why do a lot of people come, you know, a lot of people come and work with me because they feel stuck. They don't know how to eat. They're, they're stuck in their health. They don't know what to do. I and think I that's a big them. one. Yeah. And yeah. guess what happens? They go through the honeymoon phase. This is great. And then they're like, I can't do this. And they're stuck for a moment of moving forward and, and, and taking the steering wheel in their care because it's new and it's unknown territory. So to support someone in, in, in self-nurturing and self-care and honoring what they're feeling inside and talking about the fears, like this is a scary thing to take care of me. I was on a podcast yesterday and um, I use the analogy, you know, the reason I really do what I do is that I struggled with an eating disorder in my teens through my 20s. 
And I just got to a point where, I mean, I was purging like two, four times a day. It was bad. And I was very successful as a consultant and designer and art director. But on the inside, I was screaming because my life felt out of control. And I was living with someone who had no idea I was purging. I'm so good at it. So anyway, family member said, you know, brought it to the forefront. I called up my doc and I said, hey, Dr. John, I need help. I'm bulimic. And he said, you took the first step to your recovery. So he put me in touch with a good functional doc, a nutritionist, um, a really, um, I started doing acupuncture and healing work. I did what I needed to do to help me heal, but they supported me along the way. And that support allowed me to trust my inner voice. That support allowed me to little by little get over my body dysmorphia and have to establish a good relationship with food. And the reason I do what I do, it's a little scary out there on your own. I just want to support women so that they can trust that inner voice and that when they do get stuck, that they have the tools to work through that instead of going back to old habits. That's um, that's a very interesting point you, you bring up because for me, like I said, when we had our conversation a few weeks ago, speaking about it actually helped me quite a bit. Yeah. And one of the questions that I have um, about this, this whole thing is, has to do with, you know, what you, when you, are in this position like this. Um, I'll, I'll give you, a, I was reluctant to speak about this with anybody uh, close to me because of being stuck, because I, I just thought, you know, like, well, who's going to take this serious, seriously? People, and it goes back to societal things too. People will just say, uh, you know, stop and just get on with it or just, you know, sit down in front of the desk. I mean, but when it comes to writing, you know, everybody's got advice for writer's block or being stuck. And, and, um, but um, very often it's, it's not the, the kind of support to use the word you just use that you need. Yeah. Um, and the support is so important to, because I think when I spoke with you, you reacted to me like someone who, does support and does provide the foundation for someone to go forward um, with their own confidence. So I think speaking to you, that, that's why that helped me. Speaking yeah, I to saw you that because, shift. You went, oh. yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. And it was, it was, yeah. um, it was very interesting to me because I had been reluctant to really speak about it and to to speak to other people about it. You kind of expect that they'll say well, you know, just, just do this or just do that. But or just maybe others that. wouldn't, maybe there were certain people that wouldn't, they would have been like, wow, what do you, what does that feel like? Yeah. Well, that would be interesting. Cause then that would be, right? we make assumptions that I could up about it. Yeah. I've had people, yeah. I'm like, how long have you been carrying this burden? Well, nobody's going to understand, but I'm like, but if you spoken, so maybe the first person didn't find people that you can access that can just, you know, sometimes we don't need advice. We just need to like be able to speak what we're feeling. So, so often. Yes. So often. And then we hear yeah. the words and we're like, oh, so that's what's going on with me. That's yes. what I can examine and look at. And, and I find that when people are trying, I always say to people, my friend laughs at me because <laughs> I always say, um, can, can I make a recommendation or suggestion? And because you don't want to tell somebody what to do or, you know, you want yeah. to give people possibility. I mean, when, when, when you're dealing with a creative process, I know I'm a creative. I mean, having somebody, you know, say you need to do this. No, I don't need to do anything. I have to, I have to figure out what is it. And I bring this up because I think for a lot of people, we are not supported in it, um, always in, in, uh, living our dreams were shot down. So people don't share, or as you, you felt like, well, people aren't going to understand this. And yeah, I did. I mean, I did. is, is it, the, it was I mean, my, it, that's my, I think that's my, my bringing my sense of, 
of being embarrassed by being stuck or feeling, you know, that that's, or feeling the negativity of it. Once again, I think this is such a negative thing. Being stuck is so negative. You can't talk about it. And that's, that's something that, that's something that I think I've, I've gotten past now, actually, with this episode here, I've gotten past that because I understand it now in a different way. I did tackle it in a different way. And maybe it's my maturity being a bit older now, but, but I, I don't think in the past I, handle being stuck quite the same way well, and i think we, I had we this... beat ourselves up because everything is about being a success you have yes. to be the best you have to win and yeah. you know i mean when the only way you win there's one constant in life change mm -hmm. that's one constant you're always going to change things are going to shift and when we're not changing stuckness knocks on our door going hello we need a moment here. The way you were living your life led you up to this moment. Now you get to ex have another experience by opening up yourself in a different way. I mean, who I was two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, I shifted two and a half, three months ago after my brother passed. Yeah. It gives me a very different outlook. There are certain things that don't bother me anymore because there's no reason for it to bother me. Okay, because, good. Here's here's my question. Sure. I have a big question. Big question. Because we're asked. talking about we're talking about all this and I, I feel fortunate now that that I've got my writing here next to me. I've started writing again I, in yeah. the past few weeks and it's it's um and I've lost that fear and I've got my confidence back. However, though, I do have a question about is there a point where being stuck is a bad thing? And is there a point where being stuck is 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 something that's holding you back or causing problems in your life because i think yeah. i think i was fortunate that you know okay i had this episode of stuck but four months isn't really but i was just with a friend of mine and she said she's been stuck for two years now i was going to say two years a lot sounds of... like a long time to me but i have people that come to me that have said <laughs> i've been stuck for years and yeah. i need help with my health mm -hmm. my feeling is when i get stuck and I'm like, I need some advice. I'll speak to friends. I may mm -hmm. speak to a coach. Um, I will seek out advice. I will speak with someone. This is what I'm feeling. And I like you did, you know, when you and I had a conversation a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. I was stuck. I was stuck in bulimia and an eating disorder for years. Yes. I was stuck. Well, I, was, I, I was, was stuck in shopping. And I was a, a shopping about that? addict. Yeah. Yes. You were a shopping addict. For, for that. That's Over what your memoir is about. It's about yes. the, no. the, 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 yeah. And I was completely stuck. Yes, that that was an episode of stuck. That was yeah. an Addiction is, is like, you, yeah. and I want you to talk about this. You get stuck in the groove of a record and you can't. Mm -hmm. And whether it's shame or it's a way of dealing with things or coping. But um, yeah, talk about that. I had well, no I, idea I mean, you had this issue. I knew you then. When I, yes, when I think about it now, I think that was like the, 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 um, just, you know, turning over the same thing over and over again, my solution to dealing with grief, because I could not cope with my grief. Um, I found a solution in shopping and I was stuck in that mode for a good 10 years. And what and, was the grief related to? Related to my mother's sudden death. Um, my mother died quite suddenly um, when I was 27 years old. Yeah. And after that, I turned uh, to shopping as a way to avoid my emotions. And it took me a very, very long time. The interesting thing with that is that I didn't see it as being stuck. I didn't realize I was stuck. Um, in this episode now that I just went through, I realized I was stuck. And maybe that's all the work I did. Maybe that's what it is that I did all that work with the shopping addiction and came out of it. And so I can I can be more kind of laser sharp with seeing things, you know, with myself. And it's funny that I just asked that question, but I lived it. I lived 10 years mm -hmm. um, in in... I didn't see it as stuck because as you said, my career was moving forward. My life mm -hmm. was moving forward. Everything was, was full steam ahead, except that I was stuck in this shopping mode. Addiction. This, this, yeah. For lack of, of being able to deal with 
with my and emotions. And what helped you overcome that and see what was going on and how this was related to your mom's sudden passing? Well, I got to a point where I was so fed up. I was I was so fed up with myself um, because I, I just at some point said, I can't go on like this. And that's actually the point where we met. Um, when we met, I had just blown up my relationship. And I remember you saying yeah. to me, sometimes you just throw the whole beach blanket of life up in the air and, you know, have to see where it lands. And that's exactly what I had done. So I got to a point where I got fed up and then I said, I have to confront this and I have to recognize that it's my grief that I'm not dealing with. I'm trying every way possible to avoid grief. And, mm -hmm. and so I, I dealt with it. I went back to my family. I dealt with my family situation. Mm -hmm. And, and again, it was talking, it was being able to open up about my feelings about losing my mother the way I did and, and about, um, you know, what I, what I needed to do to get, to go through my phases of grief because I had completely avoided it. So, um, you know, well, that, here, that I, I'm going to close my window. This happens every time with a podcast. Um, I'm going to, they're blowing outside my window. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's Murphy's Law. You know, I, I was thinking about this as you were sharing this story. Getting stuck and moving through being stuck is a state of healing. That's a very good way to put it. Yes. You know, so when we're changing, we're in a shift of healing a lot of times. And to be kind to ourselves during that transition and we don't have to know exactly what the other side looks like. It's like labor. You're stuck in the birth canal. You, you can't go back into the womb. <laughs> it's true. You can't go back into the womb. You're going to eventually have to go out into the world. Yeah. You know, maybe through the vaginal can canal, maybe a C-section. You're going to need, mom's going to need an epidural, but you got to get out. You got to get out. <laughs> so when we're stuck, we're in this phase of labor. It's like, whoa, what's going on here? Because inevitably, inevitably, you're going to, blah, blah, blah. you're going to, you're going to move forward. So how do you want to move forward? Right? Yeah. And that's, that's the thing. I think, um, I think I'm more acquainted with that now. Um, being stuck in my shopping, my uh, compulsive shopping, what was something that I did, yeah, that I didn't look at as a stuckness, that I looked at as just a normal um, way of going through life. I didn't realize, it took me a very long time to realize that it was a, a me going over and over again of a way, uh, my way of avoiding grief and, and not not moving forward and it gets back to the transition thing i i had to i had to um transition to to somebody who dealt with her grief and moved on in her life from there and and um and it was interesting because once again it was like like i said and like you expressed with your eating disorder the rest of your life looked fabulous and um, oh yeah i, yeah, I was and, i was a great actress yeah. Until I, I don't know how much of an actress. I mean, I look at photos <laughs> back then. I was just like, oh, my God. Um, but, but anyway, that's uh, that gets to my question again. How long being stuck is is. Uh, but I guess as long as it takes as or... long as it, you want to know something as long as it takes. Like I, my sister said, my older sister said to me, well, now that you know you're bulimic, you're not going to purge anymore. I'm like, this hmm. is not like alcohol. <laughs> you know, I have to create a different relationship with food. And actually when I did admit that I had an eating disorder, my purging, I mean, radically, I, I was cutting back. I wasn't purging every day because I was able to, I felt this great relief that people knew and that I was getting help. And a lot no, of the that's shame. That's a big deal. Yeah. That's a big, and yeah. this, the shame about, I mean, a lot of times people, when they're stuck, they're afraid to reach out to others because they feel the shame of, I've been, and I've heard this a lot, I've been so successful in my life. And here I am, and I'm, I'm on the brink of bankruptcy. And I'm like, okay, you know, wow. I mean, we all go through this stuff. And there's a lot of shame, like, oh my God, I failed. I'm using an extreme, but this, this is what happens. We have to take a step back and say, okay, how do, how do I deal with this? What are the things that I 
need to take a look at in my life and address and do differently? How do I look at the reality in my situation and, and figure out, do I need help? Do I need a financial advisor to help me get unstuck? Do, do I need to speak with a therapist? What, what is it that I need to help me to create the momentum to move forward in my life in a way that's healthy? With, with me, it was... We don't have to do it by ourselves. No, well, with me, it was two steps forward, three steps back. It wasn't, it yeah. was like a, a you know, a, this back and forth. It wasn't just this boom. Okay, now you're on stuck. It was, it was a whole yeah. process of going back but and forth. But it is. And, and, but I did it in the end, yes. In the end, I did well, it. I, I, I don't think we wake up one day and go, oh, I'm stuck. I mean, <laughs> it's, you, you don't, there are, we're changing. We constantly change. And the things that worked for us up until this point where we wake up going, something's amiss in my life. And that th there's something that's off. I can't figure it out. And then you start going inward saying, you know, I would really like to change this in my life. It would make me happier. Or this job that I've had was wonderful. I'm just using this because I've had clients where they shifted what was going on at work for themselves, or it was time to look for a new job, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, but everybody has to figure out what works for, for them. Exactly. And, yeah. But being stuck is not a bad thing. It's it's a pay attention sign. You know, it's Meister think, Eckert. Yes. Meister yeah. Eckert. It's yeah. yeah, it's a symptom. And mm -hmm. um, Meister Eckert was a monk during the, oh my gosh, 14th, 15th century. And I always remember the line that he said. He said, pay attention. Pay attention. Let me just see if I can find something. Hold on one moment. I love this. This is from Meister Eckert. It's hanging on my wall. Oh, okay. And I just think it's a it's, it's a great um, it's a great little prayer. The eye in which I see God is the same eye in which God sees me. My eye and God's eye are one eye, one seeing, and one knowing, and one loving. And what that also means to me is that when I look at someone, I'm looking at their divinity, their divinity. And when someone is looking back at me, it's a reflection of my divinity. So in that moment, when you and I had that conversation and this light bulb went off in your head, I just, re I just reflected back you, your potential, you, your God self. I really do believe that. I believe that's why we are here that's why sometimes we walk away from others. We, we feel that there's something yeah. being reflected and ignited in ourselves and a, and a reminder that we're okay where we are. If we're stuck, we're going to work through it. We have others to reflect back to us that it's okay. Does that make sense? It makes complete sense to me. And all I can say is that I'm happy that we're having this conversation, that we had the other conversation. And I think... I think um, I think if 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 I learned anything in this past episode with stuckness, it's that it's it's okay. It's not a panic zone. It's not a bad thing. It doesn't, you know. Yes, time is passing, but we we place too much emphasis on are you losing time? You know, it's it's time is moving, and you have to be doing fast, 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 and. Um, that for me is not some way I want to live my life anymore. If I'm going through a transition, I want to go through it. And I think the reason why I, this has been only a four month episode as opposed to a 10 year episode is because I understand it a bit better now. And mm -hmm. as I was going through it, I did some of the right things that I guess, and I didn't, and I just realized this on this podcast, I guess those were the things that I learned coming out of my shopping addiction and I'm applying them again now. And I'm not um, aware, I'm not completely aware that that's what I'm doing, but it was. It was the first thing I, I when I felt stuck, I took physical care of my physical self. Yeah. I let myself not panic and I said, okay, let me sit with this. I was uncomfortable with it. I'm not saying I was completely comfortable with it, but I said, I got to sit with this and I got to see what is this about. And then the conversation with you ultimately helped me quite a lot. And, and, um, and I'm back, you know, 
sitting in front back of in the saddle. writing again. Now, <laughs> if my book gets again. rejected again, I don't know what I'm going to do, but <laughs> that's, you know what? But, I realize that it doesn't matter. What matters is that I'm writing because- And it's, you're it's, enjoying it and you're exactly. having- That's, and it this is. is the most, and this is what I said to myself. I said, you love to write. That's why you write. You made your life writing. Keep going, no matter what. Just keep going because that's that's what gives me pleasure. That's what what fuels my existence uh, to a certain degree, and and um, and that's what people the way see. I express myself. And you know. people will see that in your writing. I mean, I yeah. think every. It's funny. I had um, there was a great designer. Do you remember Milton Glaser in New York? He had yes. Pushpin. Yeah. yeah. I took a course with Milton. He, Milton Glaser was this incredible designer in the, the 60s and 70s. He'd actually done the Bob Dylan poster, if people can remember it, with this like this psychedelic kind of silhouette of Bob Dylan. But he created the I, I Love New York um, logo oh, right. with logo, the heart. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. I love when I took Iconic. a course. Yeah. yeah. And I took a course with him, an evening course, years after being a designer. And he said, when you can look at a piece of art or look at something that moves you, then you are experiencing God. So whether it is writing or art or music, and then you get to have that experience and you're experiencing that. I mean, I, you know, I said this in a podcast yesterday and maybe you can relate to this. Um, I, when I was in, in college and I was, I attended the school of visual arts and I was majoring in illustration, Saturday nights were the only night that I could like do my own art during the week. I was working on projects. So it was about 12, one thirty at night and the moon was full and I was at my ta drafting table doing this drawing and I looked out the window and I had this moment of absolute bliss and serenity. And I said, this is God and God to me is everything. And I felt so connected to the universe, so connected in that moment. And it was, I never let go of that. So when I have those moments, oh my God, and you get that when you write and people can get that while they cook and when they're with their children and maybe they have an exchange in a conversation with someone. And when we're stuck, it's an opportunity to experience another deeper level of ourselves so that we can deeply, more deeply connect with others in this world. So I, yeah, uh, you if know, you use, yeah, if you use the stuckness, um, the use right it way. In a constructive, it's not a bit, uh, you know, getting back to it, being stuck. So, um, but we can look at that moment of congratulations, you hit a wall, I'm stuck, to, okay, this is a pause button. What do I want to look at in my life? That's really what it is. That's okay. It's okay. It really Absolutely. is. Absolutely. I like that. I like the idea of just congratulate yourself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's like, rather oh, wow. Than, oh. Rather than saying, oh, wow. Um, yeah, there's oh a great, God, you know, oh, what the this fuck? is terrible. I, oh, this I, is I'm ter really bad. Yeah. No, say so congratulations. I love it. So that's like, what I'm going to say oh, to myself. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm on the brink of something new. Of a breakthrough. It's a breakthrough. I'm exactly. on the brink of something new. Don't exactly. know what it is, but yeah. I'm shifting. This is yeah. awesome. That's yeah. another way of looking at being stuck. So when you're stuck, it is a, you're like, oh, fuck. Oh, holy, yeah, I'm cursing a lot lately on my podcast. Yeah, but now, like, now, I, now yeah. I have confidence. Now I have confidence in yeah, my writing. Yeah, you have confidence. confidence confidence yeah. that that i i because you're being authentically true to you yeah that's yeah. really what I mean, it is it's I, I think life is how can you be authentic to who you are and be that in the world and allow others to be that and support others in reflecting that back to them just be just do you that's my i wish i had a t-shirt just do just you just do you just do you <laughs> so avis i want to thank you so much for joining me today Thank and you. I would love, is there anything that you would like to conclude with? And I'm going to share your contact information and a link to your book, which is really awesome. And I can't wait for Thank the next you. book to come out. I'll have you come back. Um, but is there something, closing words that you would like to leave uh, with our listeners? 
Uh, I, I haven't thought about closing words except what I what I just said that that the idea of looking at being stuck as a negative um, isn't always the most productive approach to it. And if you look at, like you said, congratulating yourself on being stuck and then yeah. using it as a breakthrough tool, yeah. a transitional tool, um, it can be really um, something that's quite helpful. And being stuck is um, is probably sometimes the best thing that, that can happen oh, to you from time to time. It's something that can be very helpful uh, to we, yeah. get I mean, we'll to the on. next I, level. I, I really, I, I feel that being stuck can be, um, at different points in our lives, is absolutely profound because you're giving birth to another version of you, if you choose that. Super. If you choose you it. Yeah. I so choose every, it. Yeah. <laughs> Avis, thank you so much. And I want to thank, thank all you. our sweet listeners. And if you like what you are hearing, please subscribe if you have not. And if you're new to this podcast, I'm so glad you can join us. Uh, you're able to join us today. And you can uh, subscribe on iTunes and Spotify. You can follow me on Instagram at Hormone Lifestyle Zone. I always leave some fabulous information. And if you'd like to work with me, uh, check me out at megrichichi.com. Maybe we can have a breakthrough and help you get unstuck in your health and your well-being. So sweet lovelies, as always, so good to have you here. And I want to thank you again for joining me and Avis on the Hormone Lifestyle Zone. Take good care.